Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode. This week, my guest is Brian Florip, and he runs the Etsy shop Florip Workshop. He also has an independent e-commerce web- web- website, I'm sorry, which is at floripworkshop.com. Brian, thank you so much for being my guest and welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. So before we launch into it, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up on Etsy? Oh, sure. Good question. So um, I'm Brian Florup. I um, started woodworking probably probably 20 years ago, and um, I didn't have the best tools or the best skills, and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, so I put that away for about 13 years. Wow. Uh, and then in 2013, my wife asked me to build a sewing table for her, and um, I did. And and I, I struggled with the tools I had, and I said, you know, if, if you want me to build more stuff, I'm probably going to need a better table saw. And so she was all in favor of that, so I, I did that. And with uh, a proper tools that can cut accurate angles, um, I just I really started loving woodworking, and, and so I've been doing it ever since. And um, probably for, for a few years, you know, people were saying, you should sell your stuff, and I mm-hmm. avoided that. Yeah. Um, until about 2017. So in your case, it wasn't a case of a bad workman complaining about his tools. You really, um, you really did it. You really did have bad tools and needed better ones, huh? Uh, it could have been both. <laughs> now, um, did you teach yourself woodworking or did you take formal classes to learn the craft? Um, I had, you know, shop class back in high school. Okay. Otherwise, I've had no, no, well, no, I took one one class on how to build cabinet doors. Uh-huh. Uh, but other than that, not a whole lot of formal training. Okay. So in Florp Workshop, what specifically do you make and sell? Uh, so it's a variety of products, but um, the the number one bestseller is uh, Plinko Boards. Um, specifically custom logo Plinko boards for people's businesses. And what is a Plinko board for anyone who doesn't really know? <laughs> I've seen the pictures and I think I can figure it out, but I don't, I, I'm not familiar with them. Sure. So on uh, The Price is Right, there's a, a little mini game on there called Plinko where you uh, drop oh. a disc in the top and it oh. plops down between the various pegs and then lands in a prize slot. Um, and so that's essentially what I built, uh, smaller versions. I think uh, on Price is Right, it's, you know, taller than people. Oh. Um, so, yeah, so we have uh, three different sizes of that. And um, people buy them to have uh, a lot of doctors and dentists buy them. Um, and I think that's for the, you know, the, the younger patients to when they get done, they drop a ball in there and they get whatever prize it ends up. Yes. Um, yeah, also uh, trade shows. Um, so, you know, when, when people are doing events or trade shows, they, they find that those are um, popular items to get people to engage with them at their at their booth. Oh, you know, now that you mention it, I have seen these at the pediatrician's office. And yes, it makes sense now what now it all it's all coming together i knew i I knew it looked familiar but i just couldn't place where i had seen them before sure yeah we have a unusual number of dentists and orthodontists that have bought our plinko (laughs) boards now so you make um custom plinko boards and and offices will get their logo or their names on them how do they find you and or how did you tap into that market um, so much like woodworking in general, it, it started with my wife. She wanted one for her, uh, she sold lipstick. So she wanted one for her lipstick business. And I think we went on Etsy and, and probably Google and other places to look for them. And I just didn't like, 
uh, what was out there. And I said, I can do one. I can make something better than that for you. Mm. And so I did it. And then of along with everything else, she said, well, you, sh- you should sell these. <laughs> and so I put it on Etsy and, and it slowly evolved. So if, so say if a, if a doctor's office wanted to get one, they, they, they come to your shop on Etsy and then place the order. Yep. They place the order and, um, a lot of them will message me ahead of time and, uh, you know, just send me the logo and just say, can you work with this logo? Okay. Um, but if it, you know, some don't though, some just, um, place the order and then, uh, in the listing, it tells them where to email their file to. Okay. Um, otherwise they'll follow up with me ask, uh, afterwards and ask where to send the file and um, the rest is history. Okay. And have you found that they tell each other about you and a lot of traffic or, or business comes from word of mouth referrals? Uh, n- not really. Uh, that's, that's what was surprising that's to me. So odd, yeah. When, yeah, <laughs> when all these dentists and orthodontists were ordering these, I thought, well, there must be some orthodontist convention that they all go to and, <laughs> And, you know, the keynote speakers showed a Plinko board or something, but <laughs> nothing like that happened. Wow. So it's so it's all you then. So that means all the traffic is is due to the efforts that you're putting in to, to attract buyers. Yeah, um, okay. mostly Etsy. Um, so like you said, I do have a, a separate um website, Flora Workshop, mm-hmm. uh, or PlinkoShop.com, because a lot of people can't spell Flora. Okay. Um, but, uh, but sales on there are about 3% um, what they are on Etsy. So it, it, all, most of the traffic is on Etsy. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to touch on that because I want to jump more into that as well. But um, regarding branching out into your own website we get since there isn't as much traffic to that as to your etsy shop have you found it beneficial to keep that going um yeah, yes i would say yes because I, okay. I still am um but um that's a good question uh you know it's 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 through shopify so it's yeah. a pretty low monthly payment okay um my marketing efforts are almost exclusively around um, building uh, traffic there. Okay. Um, and it seems it seems to be working. Some of the most more recent things that I've started seem to be working, um, but the sales are not increasing. So okay. I, I I don't know if it's the you know trust people have in Etsy rather than other sites or or what, but haven't haven't figured that out yet. Yes. I mean, I, I think there there is that factor of um, people being comfortable with this site. Um, I feel like if people know you from Etsy, then then to buy from you on your own website would would not be a would not be an issue. It would be a no brainer. But for someone who finds you on the Internet and then comes there without really knowing, I think they have a bit more pause. And I don't mean you per se, but just in general. Um, so I, I know that's your, that's not something that's unique to you just from talking to other sellers to, um, a lot of people who branch out from Etsy will, will also say that at least in the beginning, they get more of their traffic from Etsy before their e-commerce site starts to pick up. Typically what's the turnaround time when, uh, a company or or a customer requests a custom Plinko board to getting it all shipped and at their door? Um, so they do vary depending on the size, but typically it's about two to three weeks. Okay. So does that mean that typically you're working on one order at a time or can you work on multiple? Um, I can definitely work on multiple orders at a time. Uh, Typically, what I do is um, spend a weekend cutting all the components and, and routing them and, and everything else, and then getting them to, to a certain state where they can sit until somebody places an order, and then I put the finishing touches on them. Okay. Okay. So let's backtrack to when you when you first 
started your Etsy shop. How much research did you do before opening? And when you did open, what was the ramp up to? What was the ramp up like before you started getting consistent sales? Um, so, you know, I, I, uh, I looked at Etsy first before I made the first blank board and I saw mm-hmm. a lot of them out there were, um, you know, made from pine or there were, uh, the pegs were nails and, and I thought, well, I can do one that is, looks better than that, but, uh, it's going to take a lot more work. So I, I already knew what was out there. Um, and because it took so much work, I'd, I honestly didn't care if I got more sales because uh, it was a lot of effort. Yeah. Um, but that was my goal, just to have something that was uh, more top of the line. Yeah. Um, and and so, yeah, I did put it out there. This was sometime in, in 2017. Um, had, had the first sale around uh, Christmas of 2017. And then 2018 was just kind of a slow ramp up. Mm-hmm. Uh, until Black Friday when um, things went crazy. Did you do a Black Friday sale? No. Oh, okay. No, nope. that just happened to be uh, the Christmas season because um, we do sell other stuff other than Blinko birds. So, you know, there is a, um, uh, uh, you know, personal sales component, like more of a gift giving component because mm-hmm. Plinko boards, although people do buy them for gifts, uh, not too many people do. So mm-hmm. some of the other, you know, uh, like thread racks that, that we sell, um, those are big at Mother's Day and, and Christmas. So oh, right, things yeah. just ramped up at Christmas 2018. Yeah. Now, as far as promoting your shop, how much effort goes into social media promotion uh, versus if you if at all promoted listings where um where you pay to get traffic to it um i would say it's almost entirely promoted listings i don't do a lot of social media um i know when when my uh, youngest daughter was uh, 15 and, and she was, she couldn't get a job yet. And she wanted a job. I said, you can be my social media manager. <laughs> um, yeah. And so she set me up with a, with an Instagram account. Mm-hmm. I think she either set up or, um, fixed my Facebook page. Uh, and then that was pretty much it. She kind of lost interest and went on to other <laughs> things. Uh, so, so I've been trying to, um, post things when I have something interesting to post, okay. but people get tired of your 50th picture of a Plinko board. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, I know what you mean because I feel the same way too with, with the podcast. It's like when I think, okay, it's just another episode. People generally know it's coming out again. So do I really have to make another post? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, so you rely mainly on promoted listings. Have, do you keep a certain, um, I know with promoted listings, you set your budget. Do you keep it just constant and rolling in the, in the background on auto, on autopilot, or do you make an effort to tweak the, the, um, search terms based on information you're getting back from the, um, you know how Etsy shares information with you about about um, keywords that people use to get to your shop and whatnot when you do promoted listings. Do you use yeah. that to um, tweak what you're doing? Yeah, a, a little bit. I do. I do manage the the keywords a little, not not too often. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly, what I do is um, I boost up the the budget on um friday saturday sundays and mondays so just oh. friday through monday I increase the budget a little bit um just because it did it seems like and this was just a pattern i was recognizing with commercial clients is um you know they would first visit the site on friday and then they would place an order on monday so i just mm-hmm. wanted to capture that Oh, very interesting. I never thought about that. 
And now that Etsy is doing the offsite ads and um, the offsite ads on Google, have you noticed any difference? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so don't let me forget that question. Okay. Uh, but I have a little <laughs> introduction to it. Um, so when, when COVID-19 hit um, in, in March, uh, doctors and dentist office closed. Oh, yeah. um, all trade shows and stopped. Um, all other events ended. Oh, um, and good. Plinko sales went to zero almost immediately. Oh, yeah. um, so, it, you know, that was, it was, uh, I had some free time. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Drop. That makes so much sense. Yes. <laughs> um, but luckily, right around that time is when Etsy started the, um, off-site ads mm -hmm. um, and they didn't charge for them for a while and I, I don't know how or what but two you know that well one of the things they selected for their off-site ads for me uh, was the thread racks mm. and so they started advertising those on Google for free mm -hmm. and um, business picked up on those um, quite a bit and it has continued even now that they're charging for them um, so, so that's been, well, it was a shop saver. You know? Oh, wow. Yes. And so from what you're seeing, cause I know when they first made the announcement, um, as with a lot of things, when Etsy first announces it, there's always some unrest in the community and, you know, people get a bit anxious about, about new things. Um, so when they first announced it, they did say, you know, this this is how much it's going to cost if you belong to this group or that group. Have you found that the cost that you end up paying for the sales that you get has been excessive or or do you think it's worth the sales that you get to to have that advertising done on your behalf and and get that that fee passed on to you? Well, so I've always had a very low margin on my products. Mm -hmm. So when they said they're going to charge 12% for every sale, because I'm in that group. Mm -hmm. um, so when they said they're going to charge 12%, um, I needed to raise my prices on those by 12%. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, I'd be losing money making them. And then yeah. I didn't, didn't want that. Oh yeah. But, but it, the, uh, but I feel it's been worth it. Yes. Okay, good. And actually, I didn't even think about that, but it would make sense that if they're to, if to raise or, you know, to account for the cost by increasing your prices, especially if you were going to get sales too. So, oh, so that does make sense. Yes, I, I also got some sales from the offsite ads. And I, I didn't raise my prices in, in response to that one, because I just, I didn't, I didn't have enough time to even think and react to it. But prior to that, I had just instituted the, um, I had finally done the free shipping that, that Etsy had been asking us to do for a while. Sure. And, and I did it using the tool, which changed all my prices and so I had I was trying to go back and readjust my prices anyway and so with the off-site ads I got some sales from that as well and I figured if people were okay with the prices maybe I didn't really need to readjust everything like I thought I, I needed to so that was a learning experience for me too with my pricing because yeah. maybe I was just in the wrong ballpark as well. well. Well, that was the first time I thought my shop was done um, <laughs> because all my items are, are pretty big. So they're pretty expensive to ship, especially to e either coast. Mm -hmm. um, so when Etsy said they were changing the algorithms and, you know, in order to be found easier, you need to have um, free shipping. I mm -hmm. said, well, all right. And I looked at average shipping price for my products and I, raised the price to to meet those shipping prices and I thought there you go that's yeah, it yeah no more sales and uh, just the opposite happened yeah 
because I, I really do think people don't see a lot of value in shipping, so they don't want to pay for that, yes. uh, but they will pay more for your item. Yes, yes. And and I, I agree with you too, because I, I'm one of those people, I think that way as well, which you would think I would think it through that, well, you are paying for shipping because it's not free, but actually in my mind, it's free-ish, if you right. will. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, in the, in the time that you've been on Etsy, have you ever had to deal with any disputes or negative feedback and how did you handle that? Um, you know, really only, only one time. And I, I think looking back at it now, I probably handled it poorly. Mm. Um, but there was, um, a a lady in Arizona who ordered a, a thread rack um, and shipping from Minnesota, Arizona was, I, I mean, I think it was close to $50 with, with USPS. Mm. Um, and when it r- arrived to her, there was uh, a, a little damage on the side. Nothing, um, you know, it could still function yeah. perfectly. Um, and I, I think I said something about, um, you know, it's, it's not really cost effective to to have it shipped back and, and ship ship back to her. And somehow she thought that I said that um, I was going to ask her to pay for shipping, which, which I didn't. Um, and so I just suggested, you know, may, maybe fixing it. I could kind of walk her through fixing it, or maybe I could find someone in the area who could fix it, because even that would be ch- cheaper probably mm-hmm. than shipping back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, oh, oh, and I also suggested, you know, that um, maybe she could submit um, – um, an insurance claim with USPS, and then whatever they give her, it, it's it's a discount on the on the item. Oh, right. And and she said, no, I have no interest in doing that. You should do that. And I said, sure, I can do that too. That's another option. Um, and and so in the end, um, she ended up giving me a five star review, um, but only so she could post the picture. <laughs> Of the damage? So, no, of the the finished product. She she loved the way it looked and with her thread on it and the rainbow of and everything. And, and I just think it's so funny. And it, it, you can probably still find it pretty easily on my site. But it says, I'd love to give this three stars. Um, but then they won't let me post a picture. So here's the five star oh. review. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even yeah. realize that. <laughs> I, it, I didn't either. I don't even know if that's true, that you can't post a picture with a three star review. But... Um, that's what she put, and and so now since then I'm a lot better with uh, shipping. I've I found yeah. cheaper ways to ship, okay. and if something arises damage, I just say, hey, go ahead, ship it back. I'll get you a new one. Okay. Um, but at you know at that time for whatever reason I I couldn't do it, and it seemed like a lot of money. But yeah, um, now that sales are up more, it's probably not that big a deal. Okay, that had to be probably the most reluctant five star review <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love. It. I should grab a screenshot of that just so I can always have it in case it goes away at some point. <laughs> yeah. And so, um you you mentioned that you found more cost-effective ways to ship. Um is that within the Etsy shipping um tool or is it outside of Etsy shipping? Um outside of Etsy that's Etsy shipping. Um, I know you had a woodworker on the podcast uh, maybe a couple years ago, and he suggested contacting UPS and getting an account manager. And um, if you do enough shipping with them, they'll get you good rates. Yeah, yeah. And I tucked that away, and I didn't do anything with it uh, until this spring when I had a bunch of free time and <laughs> needed to start saving money. Um, yeah. And so I did. I, I contacted UPS. I got an account manager. Uh, I have a, a good rate and, and I, you know, hopefully it'll get better once my track record of shipping is longer. Okay. Um, but th- another reason that I was held off on that is because I thought you needed a track record before you could contact them and ask them for better rates and you don't. So I, that's one of the things I would recommend is, is just contacting UPS, uh, getting an account manager and, and see what they can do for you because they gave me a good rate right away without any history or anything okay good that was going to be my next question was you know did you need to show or prove like a any type of track record before you got the good rates 
Not yet. Um, oh, very good. So, so, and hopefully it even gets even better in the future once I show them that, you know, I do a lot of shipping. Yes. And is it just the regular UPS, the 1-800 UPS number that you called, not a special dedicated department? Um, you know, great question. Cause I think I first contacted them like right after your podcast mm -hmm. and somebody called me back and I had a voicemail on my phone for, you know, years or at least a year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't remember how I contacted them, but I know that I had that voicemail for, for quite a while and I finally acted on it this spring. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'll do. I will, I'll go online and see if I can find if there's a if there's a dedicated number to get a UPS um, um, manager or, or you know a special oh sorry not a special contact but a dedicated manager at UPS and I'll post it in the show notes for this episode so um, so it's easier for others to to contact them if if somebody else needs that so Brian when it comes to pricing i mean sorry not pricing we talked about that already shipping internationally was that is that something you do now and did you always do it from the beginning um i don't do it now but i did it in the beginning and um i just ran into too many issues with people um you know saying they needed a plinko board for their event um and that is one of the hazards of these things that are tied to events is people need them Within a certain time ASAP. frame. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, hey, an event next week, what would be fun to do? Um, but so so with international, same same thing applies. Um, people don't put extra lead time into their purchasing just for that. So, um, so I ran into issues where, you know, they would ask if I could have it done in a certain time. And this was when I was shipping with USPS exclusively. And I would look at, at, you know, their expected timeframes and, um, you know, say, well, you, you know, if, if you did express it, it's this, this amount, you know, this many days and, and then it never ended up being there that mm. because it would be in customs. And so I just had too many unhappy people because <laughs> the date that I quoted them from the post office website wasn't the date they got it. Yeah. So I just, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. So now you only do domestic shipping? Yes. Okay. So when you were shipping internationally, um, were, were the orders coming from around the world, as in most people internationally know what Plinko boards are? <laughs> they must. <laughs> um, and honestly, there weren't a lot of them. Uh, there was a couple, Great Britain, I believe, and Ireland. Okay. Um, and then in Canada. Okay. I do have um, a large order that came in b before Corona um, for a, hosp or a hotel chain that is, um, I, I guess they're opening 30 some hotels. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of those are international. Um, so that, that has been delayed till September. Oh, wow. um, so when that happens, I, I'll get to try international shipping again, um, <laughs> probably through UPS, UPS and, and see how that yeah. goes. So did they want you or do they want you to ship to each individual location or are you sending to one centralized place and then they're just going to distribute them? Um, they want them to, to, to go to each hotel. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I, I, I finished them all up in mid-March and uh, said, all right, uh, you know, I got to get them all done. Are we ready to ship them out? And she said, no, everything's, everything's been delayed oh, until yeah. September. And, and potentially some of those hotels will not even be opening. Um, hmm. So it was a so small casualty. In a situation like that, did they pay up front or do you eat the cost? Um, I asked for 75% up front oh, and good. then 25% plus international shipping um, when, when it's done. Because oh, okay. shipping is already included in, in – domestic shipping is already included yeah. in the, the product. So um, we just didn't have the international shipping figured out yet. Okay. Okay. Well, good. 
So at least you, at least all that effort and time wasn't for nothing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. What does a typical day look like for you and how do you manage your time? How do you break up all the tasks that you need to get done, including time for creating? Um, so I get up pretty early in the morning and, uh, usually try to squeeze a workout in and then I go out in the shop and I work on, um, some quiet things for an hour or two, uh, gluing or staining mm-hmm. stuff that won't wake up the neighbors. Um, and then I get ready, uh, for my real job. I'm a, I'm a project manager at a big, um, healthcare system here in Minnesota. Nice. Uh, so I do that for the main chunk of my day, okay. um, previously driving in and now working from home. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, so now with working from home, it's even more important that I delineate that, that, mm-hmm. you know, my shop time is done at, at about seven 30. Uh, and then I, uh, start my other work. Um, then, you know, lunch, I'll take a break and I will answer, uh, any responses or emails that I've gotten. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll also do some designing um, for the the logos for the um, Plinko plexiglass. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, you know, after after dinner, I'll probably go out to the shop again for a couple more hours to to work on the projects. Have you found that? And for everyone listening. Um, the time we're recording this is June 2020. So we're right in the midst of the pandemic and having stay at home or modified stay at home orders. So Brian, have you found that now having both your your outside work and your your home-based business in the same place has made it mentally hard to shift now that everything is under one roof? Um, no, because I've made an effort to really delineate that, that, okay. you know, while I'm on the clock for my main job, I'm not, uh, doing any work. Yeah. Uh, otherwise it would be too, e- you know, so if, if something just needs another coat of paint or something, it'd be too easy to go out there and get distracted yeah. and not get back and get what I need to get done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That makes sense. And then how about, how about cutting off at the end of the day? Like, do you have a set time where you're completely off the clock, both? I mean, the, you know, the regular day job and your business and, you it's just family time or downtime there's no checking messages or anything are you good about doing that as well no <laughs> not, not at all um but but i'm i'm trying cuz you know we've uh i had a heart to heart with with my family that you know there's there needs to be more of a balance yeah um so i'm really trying to schedule and work around other people's schedule cuz um uh, my my youngest daughter she has a job she's she's working for a grocery store um and my daughter and my wife is a um labor and delivery nurse who works nights so i do have uh evenings that are completely free um where i don't have any other responsibility so i try to get all my work done on those nights and then other times where people have all and for some reason want to spend time with me i'm available and i can <laughs> spend time with them i like that for some reason yeah, they just do. <laughs> okay. Now, when you get a new idea for a new product, typically, how long does it take from inception to actually creating it and then to having it up and ready for sale? Um, if it's just something I'm thinking of, it takes a long time, mm. uh, you know, like maybe 18 months, um, just because I, I am busy with the things I'm already selling. Mm. So even though in my head I think I have a good idea, I don't have time to uh, to work on that and get it out. Mm. Um, if it's something that someone else asked for, 
then that makes it to the top of the list. And, yeah. you know, and I really enjoy that. I enjoy working with people, um, you know, usually people I know yeah. who bring an idea to me and then, um, you know, I get to do some drawings and, and bounce it off them and see what they think. And then, uh, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it makes for a good finished product, that sort of collaboration. Yeah. And in fact, that was, that was going to be my next question was, do you prefer getting your product ideas from just what other people come up with? Or do you prefer brainstorming them on your own? Yeah, definitely brainstorming. Uh, yeah. One of the things that helped fill in the, the downtime from COVID uh, was a friend of mine came to me with an idea for a, um, a Peloton leaderboard um, where you can track your your um, personal records, um, oh, yeah. and then also a shoe rack, so it, so you can hang your Peloton shoes from it. Um, oh, so yeah. he and I worked on that design, you know, and he he showed me some things that he liked, and I came up with some ideas, and uh, we ended up uh, I came up with the idea to put uh, magnet magnetic chalkboard pieces on there, so that um, if they get kind of gross, because chalkboard paint tends to get kind of yucky over time Mm -hmm. um you can just you can just swap them out they're just you know individual pieces that the magnets hold on so you can pull those off and i can make a new one and and that sort of thing so nice so that was something he wanted and i built for him and i said do you think other people would want this and so we we put it on the site and and he promoted it in his uh peloton groups and um, we sold a few of those oh yeah i was going to say you know peloton is like almost like a cult not in a bad way but you know like you know when people buy into it they buy into it yes (laughs) yep exactly yeah i saw i saw a spike um on my floorworkshop.com page uh it was like last saturday Mm -hmm. and you know i i go from 10 to 20 visits a day and then all of a sudden for some reason last Saturday was 125 oh visits goodness. and just out of I just taking a guess I said hey did you um, post something to your Peloton Facebook group he said yeah I think it was Saturday and I'm like yeah <laughs> that, that makes sense nice nice have you have you considered actually taking one of these into a Peloton a Peloton store to um no, that might be an option because they actually shut down my Etsy listing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, there's that too. <laughs> yes. I, if I were you, I would probably just take it into into one of the stores and and show them. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's somebody wanted one and said, hey, where'd your listing go? And I said, well, you know, Peloton made me take it down. And they said, well, that's not fair. They don't sell anything like that. Yep. And I said, well but it did have their logo on it. So it is fair. Yeah. There's your, there's your market loophole. Go fill yeah. that. <laughs> um, are there some things or, or rather what are some of the things that you would say that you did to set yourself up for success on Etsy? And if not at the very beginning, what are some things that you're doing now that you think are really helping you to, flourish on Etsy? Um, so basically, this is just the list of tips that I learned from your podcast. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> so we've already talked about the, the UPS account. Yeah. Uh, another big one is the label printer. Oh, yes. Um, I can't even imagine a time where I used to print labels off on a regular paper and tape them to the packages. It, it, <sighs> I don't even want to think about that. Same here. Every time somebody brings that up, I revisit those days of using paper and then cutting it out and then sticking it on. And then like when I started seeing in Technicolor with my label printer. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's, that's my number one thing. And it seems silly and it seems small, but yeah, it, it's, it's great. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one is a uh, virtual assistant from Upwork. I started that about a month ago oh. um, to help with um, pin. So, you know, like I said, I'm not great at promoting on social media, mm-hmm. um, but my virtual assistant from Bangladesh, Shuvo, he is. Aww. And uh, so he's working with Pinterest and uh, he asked me last week to set up a, a Tailwind account for him. So I, I started that. Okay. So. 
Um, so that has really helped visits, not so much sales, but has really helped visits to the website. Okay. Now, with regard to that, what was your, what criteria did you use to filter all the applicants that you got on Upwork and how did you narrow it down to just Chuval? Um, I think it was basically uh, just the rate. Mm-hmm. I think the rate was, uh, yeah, I said five an hour and, and there were, uh, you know, a decent number of people that were willing to do it for $5 an hour. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I, at this point, I don't know um, what to expect or whatever else. So I thought, well, we'll just see $5 and see how that works. And, and, and people were willing to do it. And so far he's doing a great job and okay. um, expanded uh, asking him to do other things, okay. um, more uh, graphic, graphic stuff that I did once uh, six six months ago, and um, haven't. Uh, I don't remember what I did necessarily. It, it's some Photoshop stuff that I'm not great with. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and and he said absolutely. Let me let me do that for you. So we've expanded. Nice. How how is the um the communication? Like do you just do it on do you only use Upwork to communicate or do you communicate directly via email? Um I mo- mostly Upwork. I did okay. set up an email account just for him. Okay. Um and uh we set up Dropbox where we can share files. Okay. Um but mostly the communication is is through uh, Upwork. Okay. All right. And so for anyone who isn't familiar with Upwork, Upwork is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a repository of people who do almost anything under the sun that you you could think of. And um, so if you need people to do graphic design or um, content creation, or in this case, social media work for you, you can go on to Upwork and um, and put in a, oh, I've forgotten what it's called. Not a request. I guess it's a request. And then people will respond to that. And then you get to pick who to work with from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, on Upwork, the nice thing is the the people who do the work get to review the people who hire them and the people who hire get to review the people who do the work. And I like that because um, I feel like it's a bit more equitable because then people who are looking for work get to know whether or not someone is good to work for like you would in the, you know, in, in the real world, you want to know if your employer is fair and if they pay on time or what have you. Upwork takes care of the payment though. But, um, I like that they have the two sided reviews on Upwork. Yeah, it's, it's been great. It, it, it really, uh, it seems like they've tried to eliminate the risk like most of the fears that people would have about doing this and they just eliminate that. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been a great experience. Yeah. Now in your Etsy shop in Florip workshop, your wife also sells some items in there. Have you found that commingling the two different types of product lines, because she sells the quilts primarily for babies and mm-hmm. the sensory toys, and then you have the woodworking stuff. Sometimes I know on the podcast we've talked about, uh, you know, having uh, not themed stores, but, you know, dedicated, um, what's the word? Like, you know, keeping the niches separate. But in your case, you've combined them. Have you found that it makes any difference? Are, you know, the, the customers get confused or it doesn't even matter really? Um, well, I don't know about any confusion, but it didn't have the benefits I thought it might. Mm. So when she started putting her stuff in the shop, um, I was, you know, selling quite a few plank boards and quite a few thread racks and other things. So um, it, I, we already had that, um, you know, the algorithm was already figured out that if you say one of my keywords and go to my store, it, it, pretty good chance that's what you're looking for, okay. and that you might. So they're already delivering my results really well, and I thought, hey, 
if I've already done all this work, let's just add yours in there okay. and sales should go through the roof immediately. And, and they didn't. Um, they have been picking up. And I think that's as she sells more stuff, mm. you know, the snowball has been working. Yeah. Um, but because they are different things, it, it didn't have the benefit I thought it might. Okay. Okay. So do you think at some point you might split them or just as she ramps up, every, things will just level out or even out? Um, I don't think so. I think we're we're together it's 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 not floral wood shop it's floral pork shop so just yeah. you know it's uh, we did that on purpose just more general yeah. so we could sell more general stuff yeah okay now what is one thing about selling on etsy that you really are enjoying right now and then on the flip side are there any features that you would like to see etsy implement in the future on the platform uh, well, the thing I like most, and I don't know if it's ever going to get old, but um, the cha-ching sound is just Oh, no, that instant... doesn't get old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just an instant hit of dopamine, and it's yes. like, oh, great. Um, and if I'm stressed out because I have too many orders and I hear that, i like, oh, that's great. And then I say, I hope it's something my wife sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, that uh, never gets old. And and I know the feeling that you're talking about because, yes, I might be stressed from other things. And then, you know, I hear the cha-ching. I'm like, oh, yes, I made a sale. Then I'm like, oh, wait, yeah. I have stuff to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, and then for features that I would like to see, mm -hmm. um, it, they've already done it, the, the video. Um, and I'm not... Um, doing that as much as I would like. Yeah. Uh, but for years I've had videos that people have sent me from the events or trade shows. And I said, I, you know, I wish somehow I could put that on that scene. And now I can. Yes. Um, it'd be great if I had sound, but even, even without sound, it's, yes. it's great. Okay. Are you in the prototype group? Uh, for, for video? Yes. Or, uh, yeah, I, I signed up for video. I, is that not widespread yet? Okay, I don't know if it is, but I'm glad that you okay. mentioned it because I've, I've been hesitant to bring it up because I wasn't sure if they had expanded it yet. So I'm glad that we finally get to talk about it. So for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, Brian, do you want to explain what it is? I think I, I'd rather have you explain what it is. Sure, I don't know all the requirements because because uh -huh. there are quite a few of them. Um, but but you are able to post now a short video, yes. um, uh, in your listing that sh shows off, uh, you know, some of the features of your products. I I've noticed, and like I said, I've only posted this on one of my listings, mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if this is widely true. Mm -hmm. Um, but on my phone, the the only the images come up it doesn't show the video yes. uh, but on on desktops you can see the video yes and so that and that's true so i joined the prototype group when they when they um before they had released it because they wanted people to test drive it and give feedback and yes so as of right now well as of the time we're recording this and hopefully by the time this goes live there will be some uh, improvements to it. Um, but already I'm excited about it. I do love that we can now put videos. It will be the second, the second image. So your first image will be whatever your first image is. And then your video will always show up second and it has to be 15 seconds or less. Right now there's no sound. And right now you can only do it from your desktop. You can do it from the app. And I'm hoping that soon enough we can do it from the app because it's so much easier to record on your phone and then pull the video from your phone. And so um, I've been waiting forever and a day for this feature too. So so I was very excited when they said they had it coming out. I was like, yes, you guys, yes, we've been waiting. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things my wife sells are those um, 
sensory quilts for for babies and, mm-hmm. and so there's like crinkly stuff inside of them oh. and and so we we can shoot a video of that but you can't but you, you can't can, you won't be able to it. tell that yeah. it's crinkly no yeah yes and that's why sound would be nice um yes i yeah i wondered why there was no sound and i figured well you know 15 seconds how much can you say in 15 seconds maybe that's why they said no sound <laughs> But... <laughs> that's true. You get some speed talking people trying to describe their products. Yes. Or everybody would sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, if you don't have that feature yet, then just hold on. They're probably still rolling it out. Um, and look on look look in your listings, but on a desktop. You will not see it on your in the phone app. So if you don't see it in the phone app, don't don't worry. It's only desktop right now. Brian, what advice would you give to that new seller who is um, who is still contemplating coming onto Etsy and and just trying to figure out where you know how to get their feet wet and just get into selling? What would you tell that person? Um, you know, I would say go for it. The the barriers to entry are very low. Uh, the listing is twenty cents, yeah. um, so there's not there's not a big risk or big gamble. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you said, through the app, you can use your phone to take the pictures and um, upload them and type a short description, and and there you go, you're all set. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's uh. What is it? Uh, minutes to master and a lifetime, or no, mi- minutes to, to start and a lifetime to master, or something like that. Oh, I like that. I've never heard that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quick and easy to start, and then, uh, you know, to get really good at it, it's a lifetime. Yeah. For you, what's something that's really working well for you as far as just running your woodworking business? Um, both on Etsy and having your own e-commerce site in general, what, what's working well? Um, I, I guess just the variety of products that's so, so, you know, like I said, Plinko is, is, well, was the top item. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we have some, uh, wall art on there and some frames and some thread racks. And so, even if it's a downtime for something, mm-hmm. um, maybe it's an uptime for something else. So yeah. uh, now that Mother's Day and Father's Day are done, the um, thread racks and, and frames will probably dwindle. But as the country starts to open back up, maybe um, playing boards will stick up. And yeah. Actually, I've already seen that they have. Oh, good, good. And then before you know it, it's going to be uh, time to start getting ready for holiday sales. Yeah, uh, it it just started getting warm here. I'd prefer not to think about that. I know. Trust me. Neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. But I know I've talked to some other sellers who say they start prepping in July, and I think I don't even want to think about about you know the end of the year in July. It's like you know, yeah. give me some time. <laughs> right. Yeah. What are, if any, are there any um, tools? or resources that you've found particularly helpful in running your business? Uh, well, so this podcast is a big one. Uh, I think I enjoy, um, you know, working on the shop and having my uh, ear protective uh, Bluetooth headphones in so I can uh, protect from all the noise, but also yeah. listen to podcasts. So that's really great. Um, the UPS marketplace is 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 great one of the reasons and this is you know when i was talking to my account manager one of the things i brought up to her is that it was kind of a pain to have to copy line by line from etsy and then go over to ups and paste it in Mm. and um she said have you gone to the seller marketplace in ups and i had no idea what that was um but it, it it's a um interface that just pulls all of your sales from etsy or other online sites uh, and put some UPS for you, and so uh, oh, it's wow. the same, same. Yeah, it's great. It's the same type of fast um, interface that you have with Etsy. Huh. Uh, you know, if you wanted to use uh, FedEx or, or USPS, um, but you have it with UPS, um, so that's great. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Does it also work with Shopify? Yes. Wow. Good to know. Yep. And, it, and it's pretty easy to set up. You know, it, they don't want anyone to do it. So you have to ver verify that those are your sites. Um, oh, but yeah. once you do that, it, it works. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's the UPS Marketplace. Yeah, something like that. Something, something very similar to that. Is it is it a part of the UPS main site that you have to lo be logged into to access, or can anyone access it without having a UPS account? Uh, I would imagine you'd need a UPS account, and if you go under okay. shipping, it's um, manage online orders marketplace shipping. Okay, actually, that does make sense. Yeah, that you that you would need to have an account first. Okay, good to know. Well, I'll I'll still put that as a resource. So who knows if somebody like you is listening and not yet ready to act on it, they can just file that away and come back to it when they're ready. And I like that you said that you did that because I know sometimes we get a lot of information from just listening to what other people are doing. And now is not always the best time for us to start implementing or start doing something else. We might need to finish what we're doing right now before we move on to the next step. So, you know, to anyone listening who's feeling overwhelmed with, you know, all the things you have to do, you can always file things away and then just come back when you're ready. Most things aren't going anywhere. For a while, anyway. Right. <laughs> Brian, do you have any Etsy shop shout outs? This could be um, maybe just another seller you want to recognize or another shop that you like that you just want to mention so we can all go check them out. Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of business with um, it's the Print Chic Shop. Um, so it's Print C H I C Shop. Okay. Um, and anytime I have, if somebody sends me a logo that is uh, very complicated, or maybe they need the exact color because I cut the logos out of um, solid sheets of printed vinyl, mm -hmm. um, and maybe the colors I have don't match up with their exact color, or they're like I said, very complicated logo. Mm -hmm. um, I just I work with her to to get the logo I need that I can put on the plexiglass and ship out to the client. Oh, nice. I like that. Sellers patronizing other sellers. How did you find her? Uh, I just did a search on Etsy. Oh, nice. I like that. Okay, so I will link to Print Chic Shop so um, others can go and check her out and let her know Brian sent you. If anyone wants to connect with you, Brian, what's the best way that they can do that? Um, well, they can uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at uh, Floor at, at Floor Workshop, um, or you know, uh, email or go to floorworkshop.com. Okay, thank you, and I will have links to everything and everywhere that you can connect with Brian, uh, both his Etsy shop and his website as well, and social media. Brian, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you for taking the time out to speak with me and um, and just to come and share your story on the podcast. Uh, I, I always say I, pre I appreciate everyone who comes on the podcast because without it, I without you as my guest, I would have no one to talk to and hence no podcast. So I appreciate you for taking the time out to spend with me and be on the podcast. Well, thanks a lot. This was a lot of fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I thank you for listening to the podcast. If you would like to connect with me, um, Instagram is where I'm currently most active and that's at Convo Me Podcast. You can also always go to convome.com and um, that's where you'll find the show notes and all the links to everything we talked about for this episode. And if you are interested in any of the upcoming workshops or training sessions I'll be doing in connection with Etsy. Um, just click on the trainings and workshops tab and you'll get all the information there. Thank you again for listening and I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes and while you're there, please leave a review too. Visit convome.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode.